Hello folks, Scott Grove of GroovyMusicLessons.com right here. I'm going to do you the actual guitar review of the 1997 Gibson Custom Shop, one of 300 Ace Fraley models. No, this is not the Chinese thing, this is the real deal. Okay, so this is the Custom Shop version where nearly 300 were made. Um, you can watch the full hour um, down and dirty <laughs> episode that I did right before this that will tell you everything about the guitar that you can possibly imagine. Today I will skim over those quickly, just touch on them for anybody who's going to watch this video only. Okay, this was a limited run of 300 guitars. Um, Gibson fudges a few, you know, they just don't meet quality control. So approximately 20 of these or so were scrapped and burned, so there's probably like 280 of these out there. They don't go back and redo them or anything, so they just put them on the fire at the Jack Daniels Distillery. This one's number 230. You got the Grover tuners there, custom shop logo. Um, everything is uh, your silver, okay, or your stainless steel actually, okay. As is the truss rod cover. Your regular ones that you could buy later all had um, just black cavity controls. Um, Ace didn't use black. He actually changed everything out to cream on everything. And speaking of cream, <laughs> okay, just real quick. Here's the Ace case. Has his fake signature on the front. Well, it's just silk screened of his signature. Okay, then you got your custom shop logo here. I will get in the case, show you real quick. And not waste too much time on this stuff. Again, this is all in the other video. They do give you the leather. Very thick, not like the cheap ones you can buy on eBay. But very, very thick. Major hardcore leather. A slightening strap. And here you get the Pit guard, which Ace always had on his guitar, but these guitars do not have holes pre-drilled for them. So, you would be actually decreasing the value if you were to put this on. But, if it were to go on, it would look like this. Notice how it's kind of a pinkish, um, cream colored compared to the pickups. Why? Uh, the pickups are supposed to be chrome. I'm sorry, not chrome, cream. <laughs> Sorry, it's the beginning of the day for me. I'm not used to working in the daylight. Okay, I'm a vampire. Um, as you will notice quickly, as I give you the specs from the included um, thing, I want you to know, number one, that I got this guitar, another Paul Stanley PS10, another 1978 Iceman in the Karina finish, all from Ray over at Grinning Elk Music over there in Georgia. Uh, best people, period, that I've ever bought from. Um, I couldn't be happier with those guys. And, and just as big of a kiss nut as I am. Okay, so this guitar here and... Well, all of them, actually, that I get from him, I buy strictly for collector purposes. After today, I will probably never play this guitar again. Um, that's just the way I am. I like to keep them perfect. Okay, so one side is for the uh, customer, or the regular... Ace Friley one, which is that side. Uh, and this side of the poster is for the one I'm holding in my hand, the Custom Shop. Um, so we have the Matchbook um, AAA figured maple top mahogany back. Neck profile is the 59. Uh, fingerboard inlay, of course, is the lightning bolts. And we have the Ace Friley, which I'll show you at the 12th fret. Um, you have the body binding, neck binding, and head stock binding. Typical uh, two nomadic bridge, chrome hardware, okay, volume, two tones, and a three-way switch, your hair to cherry sunburst. Um, the only discrepancy here are the pickups, which are supposed to be, right there, um, three DiMarzio Super Distortions. A couple of these guitars at the beginning had the Super Distortion pickups. Every guitar outside the custom shop, so the cheaper ones, and even the Epiphones all got super distortion pickups like they were supposed to. Uh, DiMarzio, according to 
um, any sources I could find, even though their most popular pickup in the world is the Super Distortion pickup, and they had plenty of advanced warning that these guitars were going into production, um, did not apparently apparently have enough Super Distortion pickups around to fulfill the orders of these guitars. Um, so they just tossed in a bunch of um, dual sound pickups, which look like the Super Distortions and are cream colored, and then a bunch of PAF pickups, totally different sound. That's what this has. So these are white PAF pickups. The Super Distortions, which have all the hex Allen screws here and here on both bobbins, um, as do the dual sounds, which they mixed in with them to try to stretch them out. Um, all look the same. But these are white pickups, and they are the PAF pickups. Uh, there was no rhyme or reason in any particular order. Um, you could have number one and they all be super distortions. You could have number two and it could be one super distortion, one dual sound, and one PAF. You never know what you're getting. This one happened to have all three PAF pickups. So there's not a super distortion to be found in this guitar. Um, two are set correctly. One is actually installed upside down. Um, no, not that it's actually just turned around back. It's actually turned upside down, yeah. Um, yeah, sure, you're supposed to have some of the screws facing this way and then the flat top pieces a certain way. But even in the picture I showed you, this one's different. Uh, um, you can go online and get the, just look up Ace Frehley 300, the, three, the story of the 300. You can find all the information there and what they did. Okay, so let's get down to it. Everything is still factory set. Um, here's the 12th fret inlay like you're all used to seeing. Okay, so how does it play? It plays great right out of the box. It honestly does. Uh, how's the finish? It is typical lackluster Gibson Nitro no quality control. Um, I'll hit the lights. You can see it right there. Looks like it was put on with a paintbrush. Right? That's Gibson. The Epiphones don't look this way. The Epiphones are smooth. Okay, so you're looking at um, an $8,000 guitar here, which is what they are fetching now. The original retail price was only like 6500 but they've actually gone up, or most guitars have gone down. But, there you go, you can see it just looks like typical Gibson put it on with a paintbrush. So that passes quality control somehow. Okay, but I've never been a fan of um, Gibson. Even though I own a lot and have owned a lot, like a thousand Gibson guitars, there's just the things people do at Gibson are just not groovy. But I am an ace. I'm, an, I'm just a kiss nut, so have to have the guitar. Um, never did Ace have a finish like this, you know, with all the flames like this. The new Budokan beat the beat the heck guitars look more like his real ones because they are beat to hell and they don't have all this flame on there. His triple pickup actually did not look anything like this, but the new Budokan one does. It doesn't have all the flame and all that. Also on the Budokan, they only have the bridge pickup active. That one's up, just not wired up and um, same as that on the Budokan. So this is actually not an Ace Frehley um, recreation as the Budokan is. This is like a tribute guitar is the way they should have actually advertised it. So because Ace never had inlays, he never had this, he never had himself done in that's actually, you know, the uh, Mother of Pearl is what his face is done in, you know, which is cool. So easy way to check it between, you know, the Epiphone models or the Chinese knockoffs or any of the others. They really put the aesthetics into this one. So that's why you get it looking so damn fancy. Okay, of course on this guitar what you have is pickup switch this way. You get the bridge pickup. Okay, on, of course like I said on Ace's guitar that is the only pickup that works. And on the new Budokan one that is the only pickup that is hooked in. Okay, again because that was fake and he didn't use it and because this was a or it was real, but he didn't use it. This was a fake one where the smoke came out of. So, so on this guitar, down is like a normal Les Paul. Up is like a normal Les Paul. You get that pickup. 
in the middle, which they don't tell you anywhere that I've been able to find, but I was happy to find out. It's actually the middle pickup plus the bridge. So you get that kind of thing, and that's my favorite sound on this guitar. Uh, the bridge pickup on this thing is way too bright. Way, 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 way too bright. Okay, I'll just show you the factory setup. Okay, as far as the way that the pickups are adjusted. And no, I'm not going to set it up just to sound good because I do not even want to put a mark on any one of the screws. Like I said, after today, I will not be playing it ever again. Okay. So, major brake angle, which is too much. It's hitting the back of the tunematic, which it's not supposed to do, but that's a Gibson past, meaning passing quality control setup. So, that is the setup. The strings, it plays beautifully. You, know, you got your ebony fingerboard. Uh, the fretwork is very good. The fretboard looks good. Everything looks good except for, again, like somebody did it in a fifth grade art class with a paintbrush. Okay, that's why I have the, I always turn the bright lights on to show you the flaws. The front, they buffed out a little more. Um, let's get the lights on there. Of course, being that it's nitro, it will check and meaning get cracks in it and all that stuff at some point. Uh, maybe not if I treat it the right way like I do where I keep everything climate controlled, humidity controlled, temperature controlled, that's climate. Okay, so the front looks pretty decent. Um, no dings on this guitar, is perfect. Um, Again, the folks at Grinning Elk, they know when to let me know that there's a guitar that I will accept because I won't accept guitars that are less than perfect. If I do, then I have a special way of making them perfect. How? I actually discovered this stuff, which I will do a review on. Um, they went ahead and said, well, Scott, I know this 1978 Iceman here has a big scratch across the big horn of it up here, but it no longer does, okay, because of that stuff. I mean a scratch that was actually a scratch into the finish, not into the wood, but I mean actual scratch. Boom, one application, that scratch is gone and gone forever. So I will do a review on that. Okay, so let's get right to the way the guitar sounds, okay? So I think it's kind of the background. Again, there's a whole one hour episode of me going through this guitar with a fine tooth comb and telling you the whole story about what I just told you in a nutshell. Okay, right now I've got it plugged through the old Fender hot rodded um, 1982 or 83 or, or somewhere. Whenever, um, da, da, da. Oh, give me his name. It's brain fart time. Um, <laughs> it'll hit me a little bit. Uh, Rivera, Paul Rivera was this came on and designed the amps for Fender. So um, these are the good ones. But okay, so it is a, it sounds like a Fender twin when it's on the clean channel. Then it goes major Rivera on your butt or boogie style sounding on the other channels. Um, right now on the clean channel the bass all it's got is bass, treble and volume. That is it. The bass is on ten and the treble is on zero. It is off. Okay, so keep that in mind. This sounds, it, it sounds and acts just like a twin on the clean channel. So for those of you who are familiar with the all, this is all tube, nine tubes in this sucker, and it's all been retubed and it's ready to rock and roll. Um, and then I'm going to play it through my particular Johnson amps that I use to show you a couple differences. Um, but again, bass on ten, treble on zero. So I'm going to the bridge pickup, which will bite your head off, not in a good way. Okay, here it is. Um, I will put this down where the guitar is because you don't need to see my face anymore. And we'll just do that thing we do. And I tend to do most of my reviews clean so you can hear what the guitar sounds like. Yeah, I'll throw some distortion on later but you have to hear the guitar clean so you can hear the guitar. Otherwise your guitar is only as good as your distortion or your distortion pedal is. You can't really 
here, the guitar, it doesn't make much of a difference what guitar you have when you get too much gain behind it. Okay, so here is everything dimed, meaning on 10, on the guitar, and the bridge pickup only, which hurts, okay? Everything you're hearing that keeps going, no, that's not reverb, that's um, nine acoustic guitars behind me. So that is harsh. So it's got a, um, it just hurts, it's unpleasing. Um, are the pickups too high, or as people are asking and so forth? Um, that one is what it is. I mean, that's typical factory setup. Like I said, I'm not touching anything. I'm not turning a screw. I'm not going to put a dent or a mar even on the screws. But that is factory. So take that into consideration with the sound of the guitar. <laughs> sounds okay, and in the middle my favorite sound that I was pleasantly surprised that it was wired this way again is the middle pickup combined with the bridge okay so you can you can almost play Beth on that one sounds like clean to a tube amp okay I am not a tube amp lover at all let's go to the crunch channel of the Rivera design defender back to the bridge pickup <laughs> kill switch thing you would actually have to go all the way from the bridge pickup as far as your toggle switch and since the middle position works and it does not operate like regular Les Paul you actually have to go all the way up to the rhythm position because in the middle you still got pickups going okay even though you have the other pickups volume shut off for the neck because middle position doesn't involve the neck in this particular instance. So you would have to actually go bridge position and then switch two whole positions to get the kill switch. Okay, so you have to go up that way. Now to do a quick comparison I will just unplug this, grab another Gibson, which will be my 1978 Explorer that also has three pickups. These are stock. It's the only one in the world that was done stock from Gibson that had the three humbuckers in it in 1978. 
they've done some since, but this is the only factory one from back in those days. Okay, just to show you a direct comparison, same sounds, same everything. Okay, so bridge pick up on this guitar. Okay, let's go back to the clean, then dirty really quick. Since this is not the guitar, but just to show you the difference. And again, you have to take into consideration, I'm using the uh, microphone on the camera and whatever you're listening to it through. Okay? So I'm not miking anything. You just get it the way you're getting it. So not nearly as harsh of a guitar. Everything is wide open too. And neck. Now that sounds like a Gibson. two pickups, metal and bridge, I would have to go to the um, bridge position here, pull out, and now I have, not that one, but those two. So a much, much, much warmer guitar, okay? So the pickups, the PAF, the particular PAFs that were installed by Gibson sent via DiMarzio on the Ace Frehley one are bitey, 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 overbitey. <laughs> Your amp cannot dial away the mess in it, so you would probably have to just shove the pickups way down in order to get it to sound good. But uh, like I said, I'm not doing it because you understand that it's a collector item. It's not being touched after today. Same guitar, not that it matters. Through the crunch channel. Okay, bridge position alone. Okay. Neck. And now middle position, which means these two. So a huge difference between two Gibson guitars and using Gibson PAFs instead of DiMarzio PAFs. Okay, but Ace always used DiMarzios and he always used DiMarzio Super Distortions. The whole point mainly of this video is to let you know that to check out what pickups you actually get in your Ace Riley Custom Shop guitar. Like I said, they fixed it on the ones that are not the Custom Shop and they fixed it on the Epiphones. So with the Epiphones, you will actually get a better finish, as you always do, because Gibson just cannot do a good finish. They just can't. <laughs> they won't. Um, Epiphone doesn't use the same process, so they get, get much better finishes. Okay, I'm actually going to ditch the tube amp now. Okay, so it's gone. Now we'll put it through a good sounding amp, which are my Johnson Millennium. Yes, these were the very first modeling amps, so you will get much, much, much better sounds because they just sound better than anything out there. Okay, let's see if we, what we have. Let's get some volume on this thing. But there's still, and yes, I use a lot of reverb and I'm not changing it for the demo. Um, let me go to my real guitar sound, so, oh, that is it. <laughs> Thought I had it still set on the other. Okay, so, yeah, and I've got the treble dialed back to try to handle this thing. Um, so here you go. Just my typical...
middle position, sorry, middle pickup and bridge. <laughs> distortion let's go to the only position that ace ever used that's right the bridge and let's lay on some heavy stuff sound the same with that much distortion on it. Um, I could dial it back with the volume control. If you want, real quick, do the same thing to the other pickup things. Middle position. So, no issues as far as playing goes. It plays great. Uh, the, whoever did the setup did a great setup on it. Okay? So, it plays brilliantly, actually. Um, it feels sticky because it's nitro on the back of the neck, so it is that. Um, but the feel of the guitar is, and the action is great. Typical, you have to grab, you know, three inches of guitar with that neck joint here on these things. Um, of course, back on Ace's original 73 Deluxe, he actually carved, or 74, sorry. Uh, he actually carved all this out so it looked like an access, gives him less ball access, which wasn't invented at the time, but Ace did that himself to make it easy to play up there. For anybody who don't know, yes, Ace actually carved away that infamous Gibson heel here and made it nice and smooth. So if you don't know what the Gibson access, turn off all that damn shit, um, sounds like, or looks like, I'm sorry, um, it looks just like what Ace did to that guitar and his infamous old guitar actually ended up becoming a black double cutaway. Uh, it still exists, but now it's a black double cutaway. He don't own it anymore, he sold it, but he is the one who turned it into that. You can see it in old pictures of him sitting with his old guitar collection. It will be sitting right, actually a shot that's almost, you'll see the guitar right between his legs. The only shot where it actually shows the guitar, the only shot of Ace sitting down with his guitar collection. So if you see that, uh, you'll see his old deluxe that he used from the beginning of KISS um, as a double cutaway and as being black. Um, it's the only picture that shows it except for the new owner that has it. 
new owners had it for a while now. Okay, now the last pickup, the rhythm position with distortion. <laughs> instead of the tube amps. I know. I'll get hate mail, but I'm used to it. I bring it upon myself. <laughs> okay, Scott Grove again, GroovyMusicLessons.com. Uh, special thanks again to Ray at Groovy. Uh, at Groovy. He might as well be a member of the family um, over at Grinning Elk Music Company um, for getting me all these great guitars all the time. Um, so anyway, that is your Ace Frehley, 1997 custom shop, one of about 280, but yes, they built 300 and about 20 of them ended up in the fire later, again, as I found out, which I didn't know, other people tended to know, but Gibson does take their guitars that does not pass quality control, they throw them in a wood chipper, and those chips are then sent to the Jack Daniels distillery, where they use them as charcoal to make their whiskey. <laughs> that's a true story I just found that out but it is true so there's the axe again there's the uh, finish you'll get on any Gibson guitar that's just nitro instead of poly your thing nitro cellulose is this it can be made to look better but Gibson doesn't take the time you know I'm just a firm believer that Gibson Gibson should close their doors they've <laughs> I know people hate me for this stuff, but I just tell it like I see it, which is all anybody can actually do. Um, if you love it, cool. Um, I love to see it hanging on the wall when I come in here. I would love to see that pit guard on it, but I would have to put holes in it, and that would actually diminish the value, even though it's included, but that would actually take the value down by a grand or two. Okay, so it plays excellent, my particular one straight out of the box, so to speak, um, but just the pickups are wrong. They are not water advertised, plus the bridge pickup um, is either set way too high, which it always is, but it's not stupidly high. If you look at it, uh, maybe from the bass side, it's really not. So it's just a really, really bitey pickup, so you would have to just whip back the tone control on it and be on your merry way. It's that simple to fix it, but as you heard with the uh, three pickup Explorer, quite a different sound in PAF pickups. Um, so, that is it. So, consider it as you will. Again, I am super happy to have the guitar to help get closer to completing my collection of KISS um, guitars that I want. I don't want them all by any means. I don't want the Budokan or anything. I don't want anything that is beat up. <laughs> so, that one is as pretty as they were made. Okay, and as perfect as they were made, except for I did not get a model with the correct pickups, and I knew that going in. In no way did Grinning Elk sell me a guitar that I did not know something about. You know, I let them know about it, whether they knew it or not, but I just pointed out, yeah, that's one of the models that has the wrong pickups in it, but um, there are a lot more of these than there are the correct ones, the ones with the three DiMarzios. Um, there's supposedly like probably 50 of them, maybe, that actually ended up having the right pickups. So, there you go. Once again, Ace Frehley, 1997 Custom Shop. Um, I would call it a tribute guitar since it's not wired up correctly and the body's not correct and nothing else is correct. It's just Ace needed some money for the reunion tour, so 
Uh, he got the money for playing the tour and he got the money for the endorsements of these. They gave him 13 of them which were slightly different than this but he sold them all since in order to try to keep from going into foreclosure on his house. Um, you can read that or you can see that on YouTube. Hell. Okay, so there it is. I'm just rambling now. That's what I do. And okay, talk to you later. And again, visit groovymusiclessons.com. Tons of free lessons, um, hundreds of hours out now actually of whatever kind of lessons you want to learn, plus plenty of paid lessons, which of course are better lessons, but um, I give you what I can give you. And I have to do these reviews too because if I do one, I get to write off every guitar every single year on my taxes, so that's why I have to do a review. Plus, I like doing them, but if I do a review and it is recorded and it's on my website, then I 100% get to deduct this from my lesson sales. So, that's another reason I do these reviews, but I really started enjoying them after I started doing them, so now I kind of live for it. <laughs> I actually buy some guitars just to do the reviews because I want to share them with you. That's what it's all about. Musicians supposedly trying to help musicians. Most of us tend to bash each other, but which is sick and wrong and sad, but I don't know why everybody can't get along, especially guitar players. Um, so, there you go. And, yeah, it's heavy. It's a solid guitar. No chambering going on here. This is <laughs> this is as less poly as they come, uh, like I said, except for the way they ended up doing this, but when you have three pickups, um, who knows how they're going to wire it, but that's how they wired it. Okay, I'm done rambling. Talk to you guys soon, and see you on the reviews of the Ibanez 20th Anniversary PS10 and the 1978 Karina Finished. IC300, which I, that is the only caller they ever offered them in. So if you have an IC300 and it doesn't look like that, you don't have a real IC300 that was made in Japan. But those are other reviews down the line. Again, thanks, Grinning Elk Music Company, so much for this and everything else I have for just being wonderful. They send me free gifts, kiss gifts. <laughs> I don't know what they get get it from their private stash because they are monster KISS fans, always doing the meet and greets and everything. And uh, when I order stuff, you know, it's like uh, I damn near wear their shirts out almost every day. I've got a bunch of them. My wife's got them. We wear them all the time. And uh, Ray over there is the only person I've dealt with one on one. And he's been nothing but a perfect person and just. A major KISS nut like me, will I ever stop liking KISS? No, no way. No, even though we all know the history and what is what about all of them. If they're in your blood at an early age, you can't get it out. It's kind of like herpes. It's always going to be there. Even if it's dormant for a little while, it will pop up. And then you have to, you know, shoot your wad and blow something, you know, buy something like this. And then, you know, eat TV dinners and ramen noodles for the next eight months in order to afford it. But, hey... You got one. <laughs> That's all that counts. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.